Ladies and gentlemen, this is real honesty without John Ritland. I am not John Ritland. I am the Derbinator. Hello. And we had a great episode of NXT tonight. Um, there's a lot to cover, so I'm just going to hop right into it. We did start off with the first match. Well, first match of the night was one of the first rounds of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Sanity versus Sabatelli and Moss. It was an odd matchup, but honestly though, Discount Chris Masters and Riddick versus Sanity, the result was predictable, but it was still a great match. Uh, On to the match though. We did start off with Alexander Wolf and Moss start up, you know, starting off in the usual back and forth, then Moss dropping Wolf in an impressive drop onto the top rope. Uh, Sabatelli tagged in, started showing off instead of pinning. Um, and kind of showing the difference between the two on that tag team. Because when Moss came in, he he went right down to business. He he was the trunks to Sabatelli's Vegeta, essentially. One shows off, one gets down to business. Um, and we're going to see where this goes because there was a lot of tension between the two of them. Um, one part of the match when Sabatelli had, I believe it was Wolf, propped up ready to get hit. Um, <laughs> Moss ran over and accidentally hit Sabatelli with a running elbow. Sabatelli got pissed. So you know they're going to be breaking up this tag team soon. I'm just not sure where they're going to quite go with it yet. Um, and then uh, Young pulled off some serious moves. He, some of the things that he's doing at his, you know, at his age in terms of wrestling. It's very hard for a lot of competitors to keep that up. Um, he went through, he even did a uh, good old-fashioned elbow drop off the top rope. But luck did turn when Wolf and Young uh, took out Sabatelli, which things were looking a little iffy for them in the beginning there. Um, and then uh, pinned Sabatelli for the one, two, and three. And that was that. Sanity won. What a surprise. Um... Afterwards, we got a uh, promo from Champa. Crowd filled with, to the brim with Johnny Gargano signs and crowd chanting, Johnny! Johnny! Uh, Tommaso, he was unable to utter a single word for nearly four minutes before dropping his mic in frustration and beginning to leave the ring. Seeing everybody's, you know, giving this guy some heat. And one enthusiastic kid in, in I think it was the third row, just... And brought in great view of the camera going, You suck! You suck! <laughs> um, good on you, lad. And then as he's trying to walk out, he stops, thinks, turns around, and then the crowd started chanting, Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye. It was pretty good. Um, after that, we got a matchup between Lacey Evans and Dakota Kai, and it's over. Uh, Dakota Kai rolled up Lacey Evans when Lacey looked like she was going to win, putting Dakota Kai in a hold. Uh, it didn't last very long. Afterwards, our lady of perpetual boring, uh, Shayna Baszler, showed up and started laying the smack down on Dakota Kai. Uh, or at least tried to. Ember Moon came out and pretty much challenged Shayna Baszler then and there. There was a good two minute, three minute scuffle and then uh, Shayna Baszler uh, got taken out by Ember Moon, which was a nice change of pace. Uh, after that, we had a uh, the last of the first round of the, uh, I think it's the last of the first round. Um, of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, and that's Street Profits versus Heavy Machinery. This one, I was anticipating Heavy Machinery to win. They did not. <laughs> Montez Ford and Dozer started facing off with uh, Dozer with the obvious advantage, I mean, due to his size. Um, knocking Montez Ford into the corner, Ford reaches back, grabs a drink, starts taking a drink, and then offers it to Dozer. And then uh, Dozer's like, yeah, sure, sure. Goes to take a drink, and then as he's drinking, Ford's like, Oh, cool, I can relax a little bit. Things aren't going to be too bad. And then... Whoosh, 
Uh, Dozer hits him with a clothesline. <laughs> well, more like just runs him the fuck over. Um, there was quite a bit going on here, but in the end, after uh, Ford managed to get away from uh, Tucker, uh, let's see here, how, how best to go about this. Uh, it does go through. Tucker gets Ford into a bear hug. Ford escape, uh, escape using punches and tags in D'Angelo, who gets in some solid offense against Tucker uh, before Tucker completely halts his moment. But after some agile tactics by Ford, especially getting Dozer over the top rope, uh, Dawkin hits a DDT, tags Ford, and Ford ends it with a frog splash. Not a bad way to end it. It was unexpected, though. Heavy machinery is super over with the crowd, and to see them lose was kind of a surprise to me, but if everything's predictable, nothing is fun. Um, oh boy. Oh boy! Then we get to the UK Championship with Adam Cole, Beer Belly, uh, versus Pete Dunne. <laughs> Pete Dunne, showing no regards for the Undisputed Era's existence, which would have cost him severely. Um, and then he did. And then he did notice their their existence. Staring down, Fish and O'Reilly gets kicked trying to re-enter the ring by Adam Cole. Cole gets knocked the fuck out by Dunn, who just sends him from one side of the ring to the other. Um, and then takes him to the ground and starts twisting his fingers before stomping him. Pete Dunn was torturing Adam Cole, and this was kind of uh, cathartic to watch. Um... Dunn gets the top turnbuckle and Fisher and O'Reilly distract the ref, allowing Adam Cole to take out Pete Dunn, injuring his knee. Um, and Pete Dunn bring the full fury to Adam Cole, even using a step up in Seguri. Dunn goes for the bitter end. Cole reverses to a backstabber in a way that seemed a little iffy, but it worked, I guess. Uh, Cole picks up Dunn, and then Dunn reverses it into a hold. Um, Cole manages to pick him up again and strike him with a neckbreaker, but couldn't pin him. And then Cole, getting overconfident, feeling like he's on top of the world, starts taunting Pete Dunne. And, you, and you, you never taunt Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne isn't that guy you should be taunting. But, Pete Dunne responded by punching him once. And that's all it took, and it sent him from the middle of the ring to the corner. Oh... Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Adam manages to get the last shot on, or after Dunn takes out Fish and O'Reilly. Dunn starts torturing Cole uh, when Fish and O'Reilly interfere and end the match by DQ. Adam Cole does not become the champion, nor does he win the match. Uh, they then begin attacking Dunn when Roderick Strong shows up. Because that guy is a workhorse, apparently, because, shit, he was just on 205 Live, wasn't he? He was on 205 Live. I wish, I wish John was here so I could like ask him because he'd probably have a better memory when it comes to wrestling than I do. But the fact that Roddy is putting in all of this effort is pretty impressive. Um, the two of them end up going up against Undisputed Era, and Undisputed Era, unable to conquer the two of them, retreat, licking their wounds and looking rather pathetic in the face of the two. Um. Strong goes in for a handshake, and Pete Don just looks at him, and then just kind of brushes his shoulder, and then walks off. Uh, but they're going to end up a tag team. You know they will. <laughs> and then, after all said and done, we get to uh, the contract signing between Aleister Black and Andrade Cianolimus. Uh Except Andrade Cianolimus was not feeling so bien, so he wasn't there. Um, Selena Vega shows up in his place, and <laughs> then the hilarity ensues. Uh, Alistair Black just almost ignoring Zelina for most of it, looking around, trying to see if there's a chair or something like that, and then after moving, after handing her the contract, moving the table, goes to the middle of the ring, plops down, and goes, at least now, we're at the same level. And then the crowd starts chanting, You're short! You're short! You're short! Um, Black 
continues to mock Zelina Vega for a good couple minutes before Zelina signs the contract for Andrade and then Alice throws it to Alistair and Alistair signs the contract. It was a bit out of character for Alistair, Bl Alistair Black because he tends to take things quite seriously, but this was just a moment of hilariousness. Um, then, as he's walking out and Zelina Vega's berating him, he goes, you know, I'm glad you, uh, Andrade wasn't here. Uh, I'm glad you came out alone. Because I didn't. And Candice LeRae's music hits. And Candice LeRae... Uh, if you don't know, she's married to Johnny Gargano, that guy that people are mad about, uh, mad at Tommaso Ciampa about. Um, and she proceeds to chase down Zelina Vega and beat her up. Uh, throwing her onto the announcer's table, hitting her with a couple elbows. Then br uh, dragging her over to the middle of the ring and leaving her defeated. Um, Candice LeRae walks up. Alistair Black kind of congratulates her. And the show is over. Uh, overall, this was a great episode. Um, it's not the best. The matches with Pete Dunn are always brilliant. Um, I can't really give this anywhere close to a bad grade. So I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a B plus. NXT still hasn't quite disappointed me yet. The only real complaint I could have is how much time they give the women. But this time it was an actual story element, not just a, a minute and a half squash match. But that's my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Whatever you want to do. I don't particularly care. Um, hit subscribe. And with that being said, this has been Real Honesty without John Ritland. I am not John Ritland. I am the Durbinator. And you have a great night.